Okay, yeah, this lesson is on proving things about triangles using coordinate geometry. What, what kind of things are we going to prove here, Mr. Riccardi? What are we going to do? All right, so example one, we've got triangle ABC has vertices, corners, points, um, of A, B, and C, and here's their coordinates. We don't want to graph this, really. And I'm going to ask, is it a right angle triangle? Is it a right angle triangle? So I'm going to have to prove if it's a right angle triangle or not. There. We, we know that right angled means 90 degrees, means perpendicular, perpendicular. And what do we know about perpendicular gradients? Okay, perpendicular gradients, perpendicular gradients. We have learned that if uh, two lines have perpendicular, if two lines are perpendicular, two lines are perpendicular, if their gradients multiply to get negative one. Okay, so now what do I do? I'm going to figure out the gradients of each side of the triangle. And if any of the gradients multiply to get to negative one, well then, it's a right angle triangle. Okay, well, I'll just start with these two. And if these two multiply to get to negative 1, then it is. So I might not have to figure out the third side there, or the gradient of that third side. Uh, gradient of AB, uh, rise over run, change in Y, 63 minus 35, 63 minus 35 over 42 minus 0. Okay, what does that gradient give me? And 42 minus 0, hold on, let me use a calculator on that. It's 42. Simplified down, it's, it's 2 thirds. We don't want to decimalize that. 2 thirds is a nice, nice fraction. C is that opposite reciprocal. If it's negative 3 halves, my job is done. My job is finished. So if the gradient of this is the negative 3 halves, I'm good. What's B, C here? Uh, change in Y, 77 minus 63 over change in x, negative 28 minus 42. Okay, well it's going to be negative. What do I get? I get 14 for the change in y, and for the change in x, I'll get, I get negative 70. All right, well what does that simplify down to? No, negative 1 fifth. So definitely these two lines are not perpendicular. Um, that's not going to happen. Last one is gradient of AC, and if, um, if I've got a match, if this is the case, then I've proven it, but we'll see. Let's try gradient of AC. Okay, where are we? Change in Y. 77 minus 35 over change in X, negative 28 minus 0. What do we get here for change in Y? We get... 22? No, 42. And negative 28 minus 0 is just negative 28. I think I might have a match here because I know that simplifies down to... Okay, now we're not done yet because we have to write our, our conclusion. Now we're going to say, all right, well, um, yes, it is a right angled triangle because these two gradients multiply to get to negative 1. Because 2 thirds times negative 3 halves equals negative 1. Okay, we can, we can do that, can't we? I think so. I think we can do that. Okay, so example 2 is that same triangle. Is it equilateral, uh, isosceles, or scalene given those three points? They're my three triangles, equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. And the only thing we have to find the length is our good old distance formula. Distance formula. And if we don't know it, that's what we're going to use here. Okay? Change in x squared plus change in y squared all under the square root symbol, derives from Pythagoras, of course. And so we're going to find the three side lengths and see what they are. All right, now this is a lot of substitution in here, but we can, we can handle it. Side AB, all right, 
Uh, don't forget to do everything under the square root symbol. Side AB change in X is going to be 42 minus 0. 42 minus 0 squared plus uh, change in Y. For 8, what's the change in Y? Uh, 60, 63 minus 35. 63 minus 35. And I'm going to square that. I'll, I'll work this way. Save space. That's what I got when I cleaned all that up. I got 2,548 under the square root symbol. Last step of every distance formula is to take the square root of that. Okay, it's, it doesn't give me a, a whole number, so it gives me some irrational number that I've got around, uh, around 50. And we just do that for the other two sides, but if we get a match next side, we don't have to do it to the third side. Oh, I guess we do to see what kind of triangle it is. It could be equilateral. And we'll say... Um, Side AC next, plug it into our distance formula. Change in X for AC is negative 28 minus 0 squared plus change in Y, 77 minus 35 squared. And when I do all this under the radical first, I get, I get the same, 2,548. So I know it's at least isosceles, at least. Okay, well, that's nice. It's at least isosceles. Okay, do I need to figure out the third side? Well, I know two sides are equal, so I know it's isosceles, but actually, back to my original problem, it is a right-angled triangle. And no matter how hard you try, you cannot get a right-angled equilateral triangle. You just can't. It will not happen. So right now you're going to say, well, Okay, so for the record, I'm going to say it is an isosceles triangle because two sides are the same length. All right, and back to my previous problem, I will say, well, it can't be equilateral because it has a right angle in there. Okay, it cannot be equilateral because ABC has a right angle. So it's a nice isosceles right triangle. That's what triangle ABC would be there. And I did that using the distance formula and gradient, gradient formula.